So, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to Mile High Church. I know you're waiting for a baseball fact. It was this day in 1929 when the New York Yankees announced that they would put numbers on the back of the uniforms for the first time in baseball. Three years later, all the teams had done that. And the reason that uh, Babe Ruth is number three and Lou Gehrig is number four is that they started with the batting order. So Ruth was hitting third, Gehrig fourth, and so that's how they got those numbers. And uh, that's today's baseball fact. Thank you. Thank you. And so here's some other stuff coming up. Uh, Friday night, we're going to be doing uh, showing a documentary over in the community center called Kiss the Ground. It's about regenerative agriculture and sustainability. Great documentary. I love it. And so um, you're all welcome to come to that over in the community center, uh, 7 o'clock and uh, Friday night. Get our sacred earth ministry kicked off again. So that's going on. And then next Sunday, right after the uh, second service, our youth ministry will be putting out something called What I Wish My Parents Knew. And the, it's going to be a four-part series going throughout the year. This first one is about uh, gender and sexuality and um, just the way that the world is evolving for kids now. So everybody is welcome to that. That will be over in the community center next Sunday. And then uh, starting on February 2nd, Thursday nights, I'll be doing a parenting workshop, Love and Logic Parenting for Early Childhood. So uh, apparently parenting is still popular. Uh, people are having kids, and uh, I'm busier now than I've ever been. And I've been teaching parenting here at Mile High Church for 30 years, and I just love it. Yeah, thank you both. Uh, <clears throat> Kent's daughter was one of my greatest examples of uh, how to do it. So... Um, so there's, uh, so there's stuff going on, and also uh, my friend Patty Lukenbach is coming out here right now because she's got something coming up. How about a hand for Dr. Patty, huh? Yeah, yeah. Come on, Patty. What an act to follow, I'll tell you. Um, I'm here to invite you all to Sacred Saturday, next Saturday, the 28th, and it's from here at the church live, and it's 9.30 to 12.30, and I'm going to be with Reverend Chris Plim and myself, it's going to be compiled with contemplated um, readings, prayer, and ritual. And uh, it's a time for us to go into the stillness of winter time. So our theme is bearing the soul to the inner wisdom of winter. So perhaps the bear might show up. We don't know for sure. But we would love to have you show up next week at 930. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, Patty. And I, I'm bearing good news this morning, too. How about Laura Berman being right here with us at Mile High Church? Come on out here, Laura Berman. Good morning. Stand if you are able. We're gonna sing together. Here we go. Everybody get up on your feet, yeah. See the light in everybody you meet. Everybody, get up on your feet. See the light in everybody you meet. Let us be reminded of who we've come to be. We all love, we are one, one big family. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, hey.
on your feet. See the light in everybody you meet. Hey, hey. Good morning, Mile High Church. So good to see those of you here in our beautiful sanctuary, and good to see those of you watching us online today. We are blessed to be together. I want to talk about vision and mission today. Each week we pause and we read the vision and mission of our community together, and I want to just say that there's a purpose and an intention in that. Vision and mission is a beautiful part of living, and for our organization, we can use our vision and mission to be assured that the things that we are doing here as a community the services, the classes, the events that we're doing are in alignment with our vision and mission so that we're always in integrity with who we say we are. And it's a great example of an organization that does that, but it's true for us individually too. That is, we have a greater sense of our vision and live from it and make decisions about our life based on the vision of who we say we are. We feel that alignment and that integrity in our own lives and we have momentum that can lead us forward. So this morning as we read our vision and mission, let's do so in the spirit of that awareness of the value and the importance of these ideas in our life. And for me, if our vision and mission came true on this planet, it'd be a lot nicer place to live. So let's say it together. Please join me. Our vision, oneness revealed, a world of love, peace, and abundance for all. And our mission, to serve as a spiritual beacon for personal empowerment and global enlightenment. Ah, <gasps> yes. What a joy it is to be reminded of these truths. And we're going to step into some spiritual practice together this morning. We're going to start off singing our wonderful song that we usually sing. We're going to have some silence and quiet. And then Dr. Barry is going to pray us in. Most often, I know I close my eyes during Shirley the Presence. But this morning, I just want to let you know, you may want to keep your eyes open for that song because two members of our youth department, Lily and Grace Pino, are going to use American Sign Language to sign Shirley the Presence for us to beautiful young women. So we invite you into spiritual practices community. Let's begin together.
joy it is to fall into our hearts together and pray. We open in this moment to the presence of the living spirit, the one power, the one mind, the one heart, the one creative wisdom that has brought all things into being, that power that hung the stars and the heavens, that power that lives in each seed dreaming beneath the snow right now. Let that move through us. You know it is the very essence of who we are. So we open right now to that wisdom I give thanks for this opportunity for us to gather. We align our hearts in this moment with seekers of truth all over this planet, however they might pray, however they might dance their prayers or celebrate. We all seek to grow closer to the source of our very being. I pray this morning for all those whose lives have been touched by violence, all those who are hurting this day, may they feel the power of the living spirit where they are, feel comfort and strength. May all of us on this planet find a way to live together in peace. I give thanks for our community, Mile High Church, for the lighthouse that we are, that we indu indeed welcome all people, and seek to make a difference in the world. I give thanks for Dr. Michelle and her beautiful message this morning about forgiveness. We open our hearts to that so that we can become more connected with this incredible life that is available to us. For this I give great thanks. And so it is. Amen.
can move my soul, he moves my soul, where I can't imagine, but it is And some inspiration this morning from Nelson Mandela. As I walked out the door toward the gate that would lead to my freedom, I knew that if I didn't leave my bitterness and hatred behind, I'd still be in prison. And from Edwin Gaines, forgiveness is a gift that you give yourself. It's an act of tremendous self-love. Not only to forgive others, but especially to forgive yourself. And the Buddha says, only forgiveness will make our soul peaceful.
so much beautiful and our wonderful band Bijou Josh is with us today Kent and Rob Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo. any idea what it might be time for <laughs> time for the letting go if you're here today we are in the conversation of letting go that song is beautiful and perfect we are in our back to basics right now an annual thing that we do where we take a look at the basics of our teaching our uh, basics theme slide is up and it is uh, spiritual practices for healing thriving and peace of mind and today we're looking at a cornerstone of not only our faith tradition, but quite frankly, most faith traditions on this planet. So I think that because it is one of the few things that is pretty consistent across the faith world, it bears constant attention. And that is the concept of forgiveness. The willingness to let go, the willingness to let go of resentment and all of the stuff that keeps us from being clear and connected. I love the comic strip, The Family Circus, written by the amazing Bill Keen. And there's one where the little girl Dolly is kneeling by her bed praying at night. And she says, and please forgive the dessert grandma had at the restaurant. She said it was sinful. <laughs> Even little kids understand and know and have gotten clear that forgiveness is important. And it's, it's really important. And I have a theory. Here's my theory. I have a theory that the thing that we want most in life, more than anything else, is love. We want and yearn for and desire deeply to feel as though we are loved by the universe, that we are loved by other beings. It drives us, it motivates us, often in ways that aren't so healthy and good for us. And yet it is at the core of our soul. And when I say a theory that we want to be loved, that's synonymous to me to we want to be seen and accepted for who we are. We want to be appreciated. We want people to, to see who we are and our gifts and talents and be able to be acknowledged. And the pain between how much that has happened in our life and how much that hasn't happened is often the, the residue of what builds resentment and anger and frustration. We want love. Love. Oprah Winfrey, as she writes, often will start her writing out with what I know for sure is. So in the spirit of the great Oprah Winfrey, I would say as I start this message today, what I know for sure is that if I'm right about this theory, and I'm not the only human who's ever theorized this, I'm not taking full credit for it by any stretch of the imagination, but if this theory is right, what I know for sure is we will never have what we want as long as we continue to feed and harbor and nurture and make it be okay that we have resentments and judgments and anger at any other human being or at ourselves. Because that is the antithesis of what it is that we want. We yearn for love and connection. And resentment 
severs that or appears to create a blockage, puts a wall right between us and another person. Our heart, their heart, connection not happening. And so in order for us to have what we want most, we have got to become very good and skilled at the art of forgiveness, at learning what forgiveness is, how to do it on behalf of other people, and how to forgive ourselves. Everything that Reverend Zamira just read from those brilliant people. We have to be willing. It's a cornerstone for having a good life. So I want to explore this today. There's a, a quote from a very influential American Catholic author, Thomas Merton, that I found a number of weeks ago, and I've been reading it every day and just going, whoa, and here it is. Our job is to love others without stopping to inquire whether or not they are worthy. Yeah. The reason I think this is so important is that I believe, and we believe in this teaching, that that's what the nature of God is about us. That God, the source of this universe, loves us without inquiring whether or not we are worthy. Now, I know we haven't been told that, and I know we don't often believe that, and we don't often feel that, and we use our own uh, angers and frustrations at ourselves to create barriers between us and the love of the universe. And we sometimes do that to create barriers between us and the love that other people are attempting to offer us. But we today are going to explore how it is that we can begin to let go. It's time for the letting go. If we want the world that many of us imagine, that world that we talked about in our vision, that world that when we look out and we see not happening, we have to understand that just like we sing at the, at the end of every service, that peace on earth begins with me. Let there be peace on earth, let it begin with me. It begins and it's vital and important because every one of us is a building block to the peace on this planet that we yearn for. And every time one of us has the spiritual courage to get over it and stop being resentful of other people, Every time one of us does one act of self-love and compassion that nurtures us, every time we forgive, we become a building block. Not only to that greater good that we seek on planet Earth, but we become a building block to the greater life that is seeking expression through us. Until then, we can find ourselves playing small, feeling small, feeling disconnected. Because that's what we are continually giving our energy to in terms of our resentments and our judgments and our righteousness and our angers and our frustrations about other people and other things. And life, God, the source, the infinite, it loves us so much that it says, oh, be whatever you want. I'll just give you more of who you be. Sure, be resentment. Go right ahead. Since that seems to be what you want, let's bring you more. More. Would you like more? You want more of that? Sure. You can have more of that. Yes. And conversely, when we surrender and we choose to return ourselves to the true spiritual nature of our being, which is that God presence at the source of us that is the unconditional love, we get more of that. So it becomes a, a vital choice in living our best life in living a life filled with love and opportunity and true connection with other human beings. And it's sort of like how uh, I know that uh, my uh, Alexa, she starts to figure out what I want, what my preferences are, and starts to give them to me all the time. Oh, I see you like that light on. Let me turn it on for you. No, turn the lights off, Alexa. <gasps> that sort of thing. Well, the universe is very much like that. It gives you what you prefer. And how do you show the universe what you prefer? You nurture in your mind and heart that which you prefer. So here's the, the rub. If you or I continue to nurture and feed and justify our frustrations and resentments at life and other people, we are showing our preferences to the universe. And we just get more opportunities 
to have what we want. So the great writer, uh, uh, Edith Stauffer, PhD, in her book, Unconditional Love and Forgiveness, says to forgive is to cancel demands, conditions, and expectations in my mind, which I perceive are blocking the attitude of love. That is, to, that is to say, to cancel the conditions which are preventing my mind from maintaining an attitude of love. So the spiritually mature person begins to say, okay, I see this place in me where I'm harboring resentment. I see this place in me where I'm not being loved, and I accept that I need to cancel that. I need to surrender that. It's time for me to let that go. For my greater good, for the greater good between me and this person, and for the greater good of my, of my beloveds on this planet. For the children of our future to experience greater peace. We all have a responsibility to free ourselves from our resentments and judgments and angers. And so we have to do that. So the first relationship that we have to get really clear about in order for life to work is our relationship with our source, God. And so I want to say a few things about that because that relationship for many is a source of beliefs from past and from other traditions that say that God is this presence that is judging and doling out good and bad people based on whether God likes them or wants to reward them or punish them or give them the blessing of suffering and pain so that they may grow, whatever that story is, okay? I don't resonate with that story. And you can continue. You're free to resonate with that as, as long as it serves. But my theory today is I don't think that version serves humanity very well, nor is it the version that has been communicated in sacred texts throughout the ages, the version that is most often repeated and is often spoken of so eloquently by one of the greatest prophets that ever walked this earth was Jesus, who constantly attempted to tell humanity that God was this presence that loves and that Jesus came to bring a new covenant of love, to, to invite humanity to get over these old stories that, that some God up there was sending them floods and famine and pestilence and all this to punish them. And instead, Jesus said, ah, no, 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 no. It's a loving presence. It's a father, a papa, a presence within. It is available, and it is this loving presence. And I remember feeling that as a child. And then when I got into Catholicism, when we moved here to Denver in 1970, we started going to a Catholic church in Arvada. And I went into catechism. And I learned something that really began to free me a little bit. I, I learned that if I'd done something wrong, sinned, that I could go to the priest and I could confess it. And that the priest would give me something to do to make amends for my mistake. And then I could be assured that God forgave me. And so I found the confessional box to be rather freeing. Then, as I began to experience that sometimes my priests were not so sin-free either, that they were human beings struggling with this dance, and I began to question it a little bit more, it was challenging for me to realize, maybe that's not so true. And then I came here and was told, look, you don't need an, uh, a third person in between you and the divine. You've got, you're plugged in. And I was like, wow. And I would contemplate that. Dr. Fred Vogt, who was the senior minister here for many, many years, I worked here on staff before I was a minister. And he and I used to sit and contemplate for long periods of time about uh, maybe here at Mile High we needed a confessional. And so we thought about doing a parking lot drive through confessionals. <laughs> Where you could just drive up and there'd like be a practitioner or a minister behind a little panel and you could go, and we'd go, do five spiritual mind treatments and you're blessed. You're good to go. Pop-ups, confessional pop-ups, I guess is what they were. We thought that would be really freeing for the soul because sometimes one way to heal that feeling like God is, 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 is not loving me right now is to feel that we've confessed and we've been forgiven. And so I felt that for a long time in my Catholic upbringing. And then I struggled when I couldn't feel that. And 
Right now, what I yearn for most in this message today is to convince myself and all of us of God's love. There's nothing you've done or will ever do or could ever do that would make you unworthy of that love. Nothing. And even though I doubted that and I struggled with it, the first time I felt it for another human being was the moment I learned I was going to be a mother. Now, I have a son. He's, he's going to be 24 very soon. Young man, amazing young man. I don't always like everything he does. I don't always like every choice he makes. I don't always like how he treats me or what he says to me. But you know what? None of that could ever damage my love for him. None of it. I can't imagine anything. That love for me is so solid. It's so present. It's the most present love in my life. The most pure love in my life. And what that did for me is it made me realize if I, little old me, Michelle Medrano, could love something that fierce, could not the presence that created me on this planet love me in the same manner? If I'm capable of it, could God be capable of that and so much more? And it was in that moment that I began to have faith. Greater faith that I never need ask God's forgiveness because in God's, the heart, the soul, the presence that God is, I have never done anything that would demand that it forgive me. It loves unconditionally me, everyone, every one of us. So one of the great freedoms about forgiveness is to begin to abandon this obsession we might have is, will God forgive me for that? Could God forgive me for that? And to begin to understand that, yes, absolutely, it does. It does forgive us for that. And that then our work is to duplicate the nature of God to the best of our ability by learning to live that way with other people. Our founder, Ernest Holmes, in his great book, Living the Science of Mind, it's a collection of essays that are really great to read because they're short and sweet and, and very contemplative, says to us, everything moves in circles. This is the way of life. And what we refuse to give, we refuse to accept. Nothing is more important than we, that we learn how to forgive both ourselves and others. Nothing is more important. And I would say that today I'm agreeing with this. So how? How do we do this? I've got some tips today for how to begin to live in forgiveness. So we begin to understand that God is this loving presence that loves us. That hanging on to forgiveness and resentment only allows more of that to be created in our lives. And so we begin to seek and look to, what is it that I need to forgive? Where do I need to let go? How do I let go of my resentments? We hear all the time that forgiveness is not for us. We heard it in the readings. Or not for the other person, it's for us. That forgiveness frees us. Well, what exactly does forgiveness free us of? First of all, it free, forgiveness frees us of our painful past. The, the challenge can be that when we've had a painful past with someone or with a group of people, a family or a work environment or a situation, we have a painful past and we hang on to those resentments, some part of us thinks that doing that will keep us safe. Next time I'll know. And I won't. And so we hang on to it. Sometimes I've witnessed and experienced myself that when I've lost someone, they've moved out of my life and, and uh, I haven't forgiven them, I use my resentment as a kind of twisted way to hang on to them, to stay connected with them. Because if I give up my resentment, what would be left? So we have to understand that forgiveness frees us. It doesn't condone what someone did. It doesn't ever make it right. 
that we can forgive another person and free ourselves of our pain to be with ourselves, with our God, and with other people in a place of love and freedom and joy. And the activity of forgiveness returns us to ourselves. Otherwise, it's almost like a part of our psyche is off in our childhood or off when we were a teenager or off yesterday when that person said that thing to us or whatever it is. We're not fully present. And we hear all the time that we're the most powerful when we're the most fully present. So unforgiveness keeps us from being able to actually be fully present, inhabiting our body, inhabiting our life, inhabiting our decisions, inhabiting every step of our journey. Because another part of us is always thinking about, and remember, two years ago when that part, blah, 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 blah. Forgiveness allows our energy that's being consumed by resentment, which can then contribute to physical energy being reduced, can, re can uh, result in depression or reliving our traumas over and over and over and over again in our mind. Forgiveness can free us to have more of who we are return to us because we've been letting that energy move forward. Forgiveness brings us back to ourselves into peace. Canadian Lebanese activist Najwa Zebian says, today I decided to forgive you, not because you apologized or because you acknowledged the pain that you caused me, but because my soul deserves peace. Forgiveness brings peace to ourselves. So forgiveness does not free us from boundaries. I want to state really clearly that there are people in my life that I've completely forgiven, but that I've chosen not to bring back in close. That I can forgive you and not work for you anymore. I can forgive you and just be acquaintances. I can forgive you and we can be out of each other's lives, but I'm not going to continue to resent you because that only harms me. One of my most painful wake-up moments is when I was a teenager being so resentful towards my father. and I've told this story before. And then I was looking at my father one day and he was happy as a clam, just living his life, doing all that he did. And I was like, hey, this isn't doing anything to him at all. It was very disappointing, I have to say. It's not fair. Yeah, it's not fair. But it taught me I was the one making myself miserable by, and when I finally gave it up, I began to see things differently. And I began to feel my life again. So I believe that we can have boundaries and still be loving and forgiving. So in order to really truly begin to forgive others, I think the first thing we have to do is live an intentional life. I intend to be a forgiving person to notice the things and people that trigger me into resentment and then work diligently to let them go, to have those intentions. And then to practice forgiving on those little things every day to make my relationships work better. First of all, possibly with strangers. If it's hard to do it with people you know, maybe start with strangers. So what I mean by that is forgiving the jerk that cut you off while you were driving, right? Just letting it go. Does it really matter? In every relationship we have, some people will say in relationship management, it's like pick your battles, right? Is this worth fighting over and arguing over and being resentful about? And a huge percentage of what we go, isn't worth it. There are some things that are worth courageous conversations and let's talk it through. But someone making a mistake on the road is not worth the resentment that harbors in our hearts and builds up in our system. It's just not worth it. So we begin by saying, I let that go. Forgiving the, the person who got your drink order wrong or put your name wrong on your cup at your favorite coffee place. Uh, forgiving the person who walks on your grass or the person who kicks your seat in the theater or church. <laughs> yeah, stop it, Sherry. <laughs> There are people in psychology that, that have a great hobby. They call them resentment collectors. So give up the hobby of being a resentment collector. 
Resentment collectors are the people who often want to start with, I want to tell you, what, can you believe what they did to me at that store the other day? I just, I can't believe it. Can you believe what my husband did to me today? You are not going to believe this. Resentment collectors have gotten into the habit and hobby of just collecting, collecting, collecting resentments, not understanding how harmful that is to their own spiritual system, to their heart, to their soul, and to the future of their life, all the while, while having that deep desire I was talking about at the beginning for love and connection. So giving up that hobby. And in our closest relationships, really working on what is important. Is it really that important that Ken constantly will not put the, so the sponge in the kitchen back where it belongs? It's just, yeah, sorry, Ken. Every time, it's like, ah, ah, oh, put it back. And I'm at the sink, breathe, Michelle, forgive, let go. It's just a sponge, it's no big deal. Practice, practice, practice. Take every chance we can. Because what I want with my husband is connection. If I'm a resentment collector, I can't have it. I just can't have it with him because there will be a wall between he and I of my stupid sponge resentments. Wayne Dyer says, when we forgive another person, we are really saying, I no longer give you the power to control how I think, feel, or behave. I now take responsibility for myself. We take our own hearts back. And of course, forgiving ourselves has been woven through today. Some teachers of forgiveness say that all forgiveness is really of the self. And the reason they say that is because of the thing I was talking about at the beginning, that our nature is God. We are God in form, and we are here to duplicate the nature of God. And when we aren't forgiving, when we hang on to resentment, a deeper part of us knows that's not the truth of who we are. And then we get angry at ourselves at a deep level for not being the truth of who we are. So forgiveness, all forgiveness, is really letting go of saying, I didn't get it my way. It didn't happen the way I expected. It didn't happen the way I would have preferred it. It didn't happen the way I wanted it. But I'm still going to move on and let go, and I'm going to forgive other people, and I'm going to forgive myself for having an expectation that I pushed onto somebody or that I expected them to read my mind about or whatever it might be. I'm going to let go so I can have compassion for myself in my daily life and just stand in that compassion all the time. And I also need to say that forgiveness can't be forced. Though you may resonate with everything I'm saying, there may be people in your life or your own things that you perceive you can't quite let yourself off the hook about. You can't force it, but you can have an intention to live a more forgiving life. And every day, declare your intention. Today I intend to be more forgiving. Today I intend to be more forgiving. And when we practice it in those little ways and we work to practice it towards ourselves and towards the people we share our life with, it starts to become a habit that can take hold of us and can be easier and easier for us to do. But that also brings me to the last point, when we're seeking forgiveness of other people. I don't know about you, but there's a few people in my life that aren't real happy with me sometimes. And... Uh, I seek their forgiveness. I wish they could forgive me. I wish they would forgive me for any wrongs I have done or perceived wrongs. But I can't force them to do that. I can ask them if they have, are ready to forgive me, if they're willing to forgive me. I can apologize for the wrongs that I have done. I can, I can be, make amends and be as kind and loving to them as I can. As I, I, possibly could, but there may be some people who will not be ready to forgive me on my agenda. And I have to be okay with that. And what I've come to learn about that is I have to let them be, and if they can't forgive me, my greatest act is to just send them prayers of love. And they're not manipulative prayers like, I affirm that they have forgiven me. Not like that. It's prayers for their peace, for their well-being, 
for them living the best life that they could possibly live, whether it ever includes me in their life or not. And that's the way that I have approached that. But I can't force it. We can't force people to forgive us for the wrongs they perceive we have done. We can only make it welcome. I want to close with a reading from a great man, Robert Mueller, who was a, a, an ambassador to the United Nations for many years. I used to see him when I would go to the Parliament of the World's Religions, and we had him here at Mile High Church speak one year. He was a man dedicated to peace, and he believed that forgiveness was the greatest building block. And here's what he said. Decide to forgive, for resentment is negative. Resentment is poisonous. Resentment diminishes and devours the self. Be the first to forgive, to smile, and to take the first step, and you will see happiness bloom on the face of your human brother or sister. Be always the first. Do not wait for others to forgive. For by forgiving, you become the master of fate, the fashioner of life, the doer of miracles. To forgive is the highest, most beautiful form of love. In return, you will receive untold peace and happiness. And here is the program for achieving a truly forgiving heart. Sundays, forgive yourself. Mondays, forgive your family. Tuesdays, forgive your friends and associates. Wednesdays, forgive across economic lines within your own nation. Thursday, forgive across cultural lines within your own nation. Saturday, or excuse me, Friday, forgive across, I almost forgot that one. That was a total Freudian slip because uh, this is a hard one. Uh, forgive across political lines within your own nation. <laughs> And Saturday, forgive other nations. Only the brave know how to forgive. A coward never forgives. It is not in his nature. It is a courageous act that will improve all relationships when we become resentment-free, forgiving, letting go. Let's let go together now as we pray. I invite our practitioner prayer partners to join me in this prayer. For the energy of love and light and power and joy is right here, right now. That power, that presence, that God presence that is everywhere in all things, all people, all conditions. We allow ourselves to feel it and sense it, to sense its unconditional presence and power right in this very moment. We allow ourselves to feel it as we breathe in and breathe out and recognize that we are surrounded and folded and embraced by the divine love that God is and that each one of us is being encouraged and nudged forward into greater peace and well-being through this powerful path of forgiveness to let go, to trust that all things have happened in perfection for us and all people, to trust that there are things that at deeper levels we may not be able to see or to sense, but that at the deepest level of beingness, all is well to trust that every relationship unfolds in just the way that serves all those involved and to trust that God, that infinite presence, is always right here within us and within all beings to guide and to comfort and to call us forward, to utilize the things that have occurred in our life for our greatest growth and well-being. This is what begins to happen when we step into forgiveness. And so I accept and proclaim that each one of us does that this day, that we can feel that call within us to let go, to move forward, to live and thrive in our healing journey through forgiveness. And I'm so grateful that this occurs in each of our hearts right now, that there is a seed planted, a light burning, a, a brightness that is ours. So grateful for the freedom that comes as each one of us lets go, lets God, forgives, moves on, claims our life back unto ourselves. And so in loving gratitude, we just let this go. We let this prayer go in faith and trust. We let it be, we let it be. And so it is. Amen. I've been wasting my dreams mm -hmm. But my
Thank you, Laura. Beautiful. Well, this is the time in our service where we get an opportunity to circulate through tithes and offerings. I want to give thanks for some of our online viewers. We currently have 372 people watching live with us. We have people from Oregon, South Dakota, Georgia, South Carolina, Spain, British, Col Canada, British Columbia, Canada, and Japan watching this morning. So good morning to our online viewers. Glad to have you here with us. Yes. And for our love offering today, whatever you're choosing to give is perfect and fine and wonderful, and we invite you to give it in all the ways that are mentioned on the screen. And I would invite us to immediately put into practice what we've been talking about around finances. If there is someone in your life around your money that it's time to forgive, Edwin Gaines, whom Reverend Zamira quoted, talks a lot in her work. One of her, she has four spiritual principles of abundance, and one of them is forgiveness. And she talks about how important it is to forgive in order to experience the greatest abundance that we can possibly experience. And so as the baskets are being passed, as the music's being played, I invite us into that sacred act of recognizing, is there someone who I need to forgive for some choice they made financially that impacted me? Or some investment that I made that didn't work out or something that happened in the markets or something that someone took from me or whatever my perception is, is there some forgiveness for me to have right now that will restore me to the truth of my being, which is that I am abundant. And so we do that holy work. And I invite you now as you do that to also join me for our affirmation. So please say with me, divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, and all that I circulate, and so it is. Take away my doubts, they only weigh me down. And hide all my don'ts and won'ts so they can't. choice with no expectation no oh, no I used to say don't but now I
Ah, thank you, Laura. Thank you, Mile High Band. Oh, we are blessed by the music, the message today. And I just want to welcome you. If you are here for the first time to Mile High Church, just know that we welcome you to the center of our community. And if you'd like to learn more about our teachings in the science of mind, please visit the Welcome Center out back. I'll be out there. There's several folks that can talk to you more about what we offer here and help you get plugged into this beloved community. And also there's resource brochure, brochures in the resource sections at both ends of our lobby. And right now you can see that our beloved prayer practitioners are making their way down front. And so I'd invite each one of you, if you feel called today to experience one of the spiritual mind treatments, which is our affirmative prayer, that you would visit one of them for a two-minute prayer after, this, after the service. And if you'd like to submit a prayer, you can write one on a sheet in the lobby, and you can also submit those online. So I invite you to check that out. Dr. Michelle, we have some announcements. Yeah, thank you. Hey, I want to acknowledge uh, Laura's partner in writing a lot of these songs she's singing. Craig Benelli's right here today, a special guest of ours. Welcome, Craig. Glad, glad to have you here. Yeah. Beautiful. LauraBerman.com, right, for more music. LauraBermanMusic.com. LauraBermanMusic.com. Thank you, Laura. Yeah. <laughs> we, are, are, we are still registering for classes. It's week two of most of our classes. If you'd like to get into the Beyond Limits class or Dr. Patty's teaching the um, mysticism, right? Yeah, great. And we've got Reverend Carroll teaching self-mastery. Lots of great classes. You, this is the last chance you have to do that. And we want you to know that we're excited to be hosting an interfaith Seder that Reverend Zamira is hosting. It will be on February 5th at 530. All are welcome. Children eat free. Did you hear I said the word eat? So if you want to come, you have to register so we have food for you. So please register online. You can get a flyer from Zamira. She's running around handing them to anyone who will take them. So take a flyer home with you and get registered for our beautiful Seder. And we're happy that this beloved wise one is teaching a workshop today. What you got for us, Dr. Patty? Well, I have an incredible workshop. How many of you have there ever experienced change? Okay, maybe in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> or how, or how about grief? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be uh, teaching from 11:30 to one, short period of time, the five steps of how to move through grief, and I might throw in a sixth step. Yeah. So it's offered on a love offering basis, and I'd love to have you there. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Dr. Patty. Yeah, that'll be wonderful. Please stand with us for the, in, the benediction and the peace song. We just take this moment to breathe into this life that we are living, to feel the step-by-step -step guidance into greater freedom through forgiveness that life is inviting us into. And we say yes, yes to that beautiful invitation. And we walk forward in love and light. Thank you, life. And so it is. Amen. Amen.